Hello, my name is Jay Rogers from Sea Scout Ship 117, and today I'm going to be going over our nation's maritime history. The Continent of Congress and some of the colonies issued letters of mark to privately owned, armed merchant ships known as privateers. These ships were outfitted as warships to prey on enemy merchant ships. They interrupted the bird supply chain along the eastern seaboard of the United States and across the Atlantic Ocean. These privateers were part of the reason we won the revolution. By 1783, America became solely responsible for the safety of its own commerce and citizens and we can protect our ships from pirates in the Mediterranean. So in 1784, the United States Congress chose to pay money to these pirates, and by 1785, the U.S. government was paying up to $1 million per year for the safe passage of American ships or the return of American hostages. This continued over the next 15 years, and payments and ransom and tributes to the privateering states amounted to about 20% of the United States government annual revenues in 1800. So, in 1794, the U.S. government recommissioned the American Navy and fought a largely successful undeclared war with French privateers in the late 1790s. And by 1801, the U.S. government got tired of paying those tributes and ransoms to those pirates in the Mediterranean. So, we entered in the barbary wars with those pirates and this showed that American naval power was now good enough to protect our nation's interest on the seas. So, on August 4th, 1790, the United States Congress created the Revenue Marine after being urged on by the Secretary of the Treasury, Alexander Hamilton. Later renamed Revenue Cutter Service in 1862, it would be responsible for enforcing tariffs and all other maritime laws. National income was desperately needed at this point, and a great deal of this income came from import tariffs. From the revolution to the 1800s, our nation's navy and other maritime forces helped to secure our country's freedom and help establish our new nation. However, a bigger test of our new country was just around the corner. Part of the American strategy in the War 1812 was to deploy several hundred privateers to attack British merchant ships. This hurt the British commercial interests, especially in the West Indies. America's victories in the high seas during this war helped to establish our military as a powerful one. During the 18th century, ships carrying cargo, passengers, and mail between Europe and America would sail only when they were full. However, in the early 19th century, as trade with America became more common, ships began to follow a regular schedule. In 1817, the Erie Canal was started and it was finished in 1825. This encouraged inland trade and strengthened the position of the Port of New York. In 1832, Secretary of the Treasury Louis McCain ordered in writing for revenue cutters to conduct winter cruises to assist mariners in need. Congress made the practice an official part of regulations in 1837. This was the beginning of the life-saving mission that the later U.S. Coast Guard would be best known for worldwide. In February 28, 1849, the first regular steamship service from west to east coast of the United States began. And in 1815, trade relations with Japan opened up. 1815 to 1860 saw technology improvements, more open trade, and the world becoming more connected than it ever was. People were able to get new fruit and other items that they never even seen before. Merchant shipping was a key target in the U.S. Civil War. The South made the raw materials, while the North turned raw materials into products to sell. So the North was able to block shipments to the South using their superior navy. This cut off the South's supply of manufactured products. In 1870, shipping across the ocean became cheaper. This began the era of cheap and safe travel and trade around the world. So just to review, the 19th century saw an expansion of naval activity, 
increased globalization, and increase in trade. On January 28, 1915, President Woodrow Wilson signed into law the act to create the United States Coast Guard. So during World War I, Great Britain, as an isolated nation, was heavily dependent on foreign trade and imported resources. Supplies from the United States helped Great Britain and the Allies win the war. During World War II, we saw a massive buildup of warships and transports, which helped supply the Allies. Much like during World War I, Great Britain, as the isolated nation, was heavily dependent on foreign trade and important resources, supplies from the United States helped Great Britain and the Allies win the war. Our nation's maritime history has contributed to our way of life in many ways. Our early wartime successes on the high seas helped establish our young nation. As time went on, we became more connected to the rest of the world, allowing us to make, sell, and consume new products and items we would have never gotten otherwise. Our successful transportation aid to the Allies during World War I and World War II allowed us to secure democracy around the world. The United States and the rest of the world is now more safe, more connected, and more prosperous because of our maritime history. If you're interested in joining Sea Scouts, here's a QR code for our Facebook page. We're at Sea Scouts 117. And here is also a QR code to our Instagram page. We're at Ship 117. And here's a QR code for our website.